Okay guys, so today we're going to be working on a Volkswagen Jetta. This is a TDI. Um, the problem is that I have a check engine light. It's for uh, the top dead center. Uh, start of ignition, it can't be set on the injection pump. This is an ALH engine. Um, I've tried setting it and everything, but that has not worked so far. So I've done a ton of research and my came to the conclusion that I need to um, do some work on the injection pump. So what we're going to do is get the car off the ground and get her going. Um, theoretically, we only need the passenger side of the car off the ground so we can have access to the can uh, crankshaft, but I will get the whole car off the ground, at least at least the front end, just because in the background I'm gonna be doing an oil change. Okay, so using a screwdriver, we're gonna quickly pop this guy off. Size 17, we're gonna break these wheels loose. Okay, so I ended up having to lift one side of the car up, not both, because my low profile jack is not low enough to get into the center of the vehicle, so let's remove the wheel. Okay, so I removed off camera this bolt and this um, whatever thing holding the splash guard in place. So basically you're going to pull it down a little bit and out. And there we go. That's the bolt we're after right there. Right now, since we have access to the bolt, what we're going to do is set the engine to top dead center. So let's do that. Okay, so we're going to be using a 19 mil to turn the engine over fits on right there and but before we can do that we got to go up top and take care of a few housekeeping things up there okay so up top we have our uh, cover there should be a plastic cover on here but I just removed that cuz whatever so um, two ways to do this um, well you will need to remove this cover right here that way you can make sure the engine is for sure on top dead center Right here you have, I think this is for the brake booster. Um, this one you can remove, I'm gonna leave it on here. I'm just gonna remove this guy because you remove him to use an alignment tool. I don't have an alignment tool, so we're not gonna use an alignment tool. So instead we're gonna remove these few bolts right here. There's one, two, three, and then there's three in the back. We're gonna remove these bolts and then we'll remove the cover so we can have access, so we can see the camshaft. We're going to be using a size 5 hex. There's actually four bolts in the back. Okay, so this last bolt that's right in here, it's a little bit painted to get into, so I did that off camera. Because theoretically, you should remove the um, throttle. You have a throttle body here, slash EGR valve, which is pretty much right here. You should theoretically remove that to get easier access. I didn't remove it, as you can see, it's still on here. So it was a little bit challenging to get to. But now what we can do is just pull off the cover very gently, like so. Ta-da. And right now, as you can see, uh, cylinder one, it's not on... Cylinder one, it's not pushing down, which is good for us because maybe we're really close to top dead center. Okay, while we're here, I think right now is probably a good time to disconnect the battery before we get any further. You wouldn't want somebody to start the car while everything's taken apart or try to start the car with everything's taken apart and blow everything up. So let's just disconnect the battery. Just using a size 10. So, now what we're going to do is set the engine to top dead center. Um, like we saw right here, we have the valve, so we're going to use a uh, camshaft, and uh, there's a little window down here to view the top dead center. Let me show you a little window. So right here, you have your oil filter. Go down a little further, you have some wire here. And right in there, you have this little gap. You see that little rusty thing? That is, I forgot what that is. 
So basically this thing has the marks for uh, engine top dead center. I'm gonna be using these marks. You guys will just be watching the camshafts just because it's really hard to get a camera set up and viewing so you can actually see. Once I get the engine top dead center, I'll let you know. Let me quickly show you what I'm looking at. So this is good because there's no pressure on this, um, on these valves. Both of the heads are up. And down here, I don't know if you really see it. Let me try to get you close. And there, if you see that little circle with the line, that little circle with the line is supposed to line up with the bottom corner right there. So we're almost at top to center. And I'm going to quickly show you how I'm cheating, why I just turned it over without really caring. Um, right here, if you look through here, right between this air tube and in here, you actually have uh, the wheel to the um, injection pump. And in there, you will see a little slot, hopefully you can see it slot, that is the alignment, alignment slot for the injection pump. So basically that's how I'm turning the engine over without looking at it. So the fine tuning is going to be done based, based off of that line in there. So I'll, I'll, take you off, I'll take it off camera. Once it's set, we'll keep going. Okay, and we are set. Let me see if you can get you to do it. So right in there, hopefully you can make it out. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. But that little, yeah, you can see it, the little circle with the light through, it is right around, aligned with that bottom corner. So right now we are at top dead center. We have confirmation right here because these cams are not pushing down. And the little alignment things lined up right here. So at this point, at this point, if you had the alignment tool, there's really only two alignment tools that you use. One that you would put behind here and one that you would shove into here. But because we're removing the fuel pump, we don't care about that alignment. All we, we can really do is get this guy centered. Like I said, I don't have an alignment tool. So instead, what I'm just going to do, and some, the guys that actually know what they're doing are going to be really mad at me. But yeah, I'm going to just put a mark right here so I know where it's supposed to align with the engine. Since I know I'm not going to be taking off the camshaft and I'm not going to be changing anything, I'm just going to put a little mark right here. And I'll show you that in a second. Okay, got a mark on there. There you go. That's basically how we'll be able to tell if this thing moves off. Um, one important thing that we need to do, which is which makes this a little hard if you don't have alignment tool, is to um, get this bolt loose. We need it loose so that we can actually set the alignment properly. Another thing is we're going to do is remove this hose right here so we can actually get access to that bolt and then a bolt right down there lower. By the way, there should be a cover here. I just have it removed. There we go. Okay, so now we have access to this bolt and then we have an access to that 13 mil down here. This one we're gonna loosen right now and then the other we'll loosen later on. Okay, so this is a size 18 up here. Get it in there. Okay, got it loosened up a smudge. I need to reset the timing because I felt that it slipped off. Now basically if you watch this, camshaft will actually still also move so we're okay right now. Engine's still at top dead center, so we're good there. Let's get this guy loosened. Okay, so now what we need to do, I don't know if you can even see that, get a 13 mil into, into there. Let me see if you can. So right here, second bolt is for the timing belt tensioner. That's a 13 mil. We're gonna remove that bolt. And another thing that I like to remove is this bolt right here. This gives a little bit more 
re relieves a little bit of tension. And then we have three bolts right on the sprocket here that we're going to remove. Okay, so I got myself a few 13s. Get this guy loosened up first. Basically, I don't really remove him. I just make sure that there's no tension on him, which is what I see right now. We just release the tension so that we're good right there. Yeah, we're good there. We have 13 right here. Okay, so what a lot of people tell you is that you need to remove this huge thing right here to gain access to the three bolts that are right in there. You can actually see them better from here. Yeah, you can see all three of them right there. What you can actually do is just literally reach them from here. See that? I just got hooked into one. So, yeah, you can do it this way. It's... Um, probably gonna remove this it's actually not that hard all you really have is a clip right down in there you can see the clip right there you squeeze that on the hook it that attaches to the um intercooler that's right down there but basically that's how you remove it i might probably remove it but i'm just letting you i'm just gonna show it this way so that you know how about how to do it so I got one bolt, I'm going to quickly loosen all three of them up, do that off camera because you can't really see anything. I uh, got the bolts out, right now what we need to do is start removing pretty much all you see here. We have two hoses right here that need to be removed, uh, this is return line right here, uh, four hoses right here that go that are for the uh, injectors right here, and then you have a um, connector that's right here. But it looks, yeah, it's just one connector by the looks of it. Unless I'm mistaken, there's another one, but I think it's only one connector. So, you should have some towels, get something, because it's going to get a little messy here. Okay, so I got the connector off. Camera sort of fell over while I was do, doing that. Got to get some more paper because basically all that's really left is to get these four lines off. This is a size 17. So another bolt that we're going to remove, there's a 13 mil right here. You can kind of see the head of it right there. I'm going to get that guy off too. There's that bolt. Um, so right now there's this left are the three bolts that are right here and just getting these guys off. But as you can see, they're pretty much loose right now and there's actually diesel dripping out of it so I'm not looking forward to that mess so I think we'll get some towels ready for it Okay, so what's happening is I'm having this tensioner be in my way, but I think I think we might actually be fine to remove the three bolts because there's only three of them. So using a 13 mil again. Okay, now if I did everything right, this thing should just slide out. But I feel I'm feeling tension. So let me 
or unless it's just you need to remove these hoses out of the way a little bit. That might be it. Probably going to need to loosen these so I can actually turn the hoses if you see what I mean. Oh, where's my 17? Basically, that should give me enough movement to get them all out of the way. And now, theoretically, I should just be able to pull it out. And there we go. Got this monster out. Just a few hoses. And there we go. It is out. Okay, so there you go. We got it out, as you can see. I will admit this is a really hacky way to do it. I mean, probably going to get a little hate for doing it this way because... Um, I didn't follow all the procedures because, you know, we should be taking off this little um, tensioner right here. Should be removing this hose. But the thing is, we got the job done. If you want to, yes, you can go further step and remove this guy. Remove the tensioner, serpentine belt tensioner. You can do all that, but as you saw, we got it done and out of the way. So that's the end for this video. Next video, I will be rebuilding the pump. And then we'll be doing another video on installing it. Thanks for watching.